moderate budget sci-fi actioner from the Golden Age of B-movies, this well-placed offering as lead actress Renee Tutendich and in the dual role as Dr. Eve Simmons and her android lookalike Eve 8. To avoid confusion, I'm going to refer to Simmons by her surname and the android as Eve for the remainder of this review. Eve is intended for battlefield use and is Simmons' flagship prototype for an upcoming funding review and the routine test run in San Francisco is going well until two masked men decide to commit a bank robbery with Eve on the premises. Hoping to keep a low profile, which is never really going to happen, the authorities call an anti-terrorist expert, Colonel Jim McQuaid, played by Gregory Hines. Not surprisingly, we get the usual chalk and cheese relationship between science and military, with Simmons and Jim at each other's throats from the beginning. Eve's defences and near invulnerability to conventional weapons are outlined in a briefing. The key message here is to aim for the eyes, and Jim is quite right to question why Eve doesn't have an off switch, but such things, at least in the movies, are never that simple. It seems 1991 was the year of the killer fembot, as this is another B-movie sci-fi thriller with the same central concept. Gailey Morton, that's the real woman, not the android that will be created later, commits suicide after a powerful businessman is found not guilty on a rape trial, thanks mainly to alibis from his four male accomplices. The men do get away the crime for many years, but the dead woman's brother Albert knows a thing or two about artificial intelligence, and now it's time to send his creation, a robot replica of Gailey, to exact revenge. Being a machine, Gailey is arguably not a true villainess, but stylish kills get her an honourable mention. And while the targets, particularly the rapist Daniel Emerson, are unrepentant scum, Albert's desire for vengeance leads to innocence being killed as well. The android has a talent for blending in, using latex masks to pose as other women. holographic technology to even pass herself as a male. A former court artist named Allison assists police with their investigation, though Daniel is the main suspect until they realise what's actually going on, and the movie ends with Albert and his creation jumping from a tall building. By then all five targets are dead, and fans of gory deaths will be satisfied with the kill methods, which include Android Gailey drilling a hole through a man's chest, decapitating a second with a bare hands, draining a third victim of blood, chopping a fourth man's head off with a helicopter blade, and considering all of this, Daniel's death by a cheap sci-fi effect is almost a letdown. Returning to Eve of Destruction, the android has been programmed with the thoughts and feelings of a creator, but her inhibition has been destroyed. This leads to an interesting character dynamic, where Eve acts out Simmons' fantasies, doing things the Doctor may have contemplated in the past, but never actually went through with. 
First on whose agenda is a visit to a seedy motel bar where she seduces a misogynistic man and takes him to her room. Come on, you bitch. Please don't say that. Oh no. I'm very sensitive. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know you were a sensitive bitch. outside who've traced Steve's rental vehicle proved no match for the android. Freeze! Show us your hands, lady! Show us your hands! And after all that, there are five dead police officers for the local sheriff to deal with and an enemy that shows no sign of stopping. As a child, Simmons witnessed her alcoholic father abuse a mother, which ultimately led to a fatal road accident and now Eve is out for revenge. And things get even worse when she encounters a motorist en route who acts aggressively towards her and then calls her that naughty B word again. And so Eve takes road rage to the absolute extreme, ramming his car off into the dirt. And when the guy thinks everything's all over... physical and perhaps emotional shock triggers a device in Eve's spine and McCade learns the hard way there's a nuclear bomb inside her that's now activated and set to explode in 24 hours. The authorities trace Simmons' father to an address which leads to a showdown between a special forces man and the android. McQuaid wisely tells his men to wait outside but Simmons isn't good at following instructions and after a verbal exchange over the radio gets her nowhere comes in to witness a creation in action. With the nuclear clock ticking, Simmons predicts Eve is going to travel to New York to visit her son who is currently staying with her ex-husband. And while the doctor's guess proves accurate, advanced warning and covert surveillance isn't enough to prevent Eve reaching her target. Simmons is able to warn a surprise ex the woman he's with is actually an android but is not able to stop Eve abducting the boy. Eve's path of destruction then moves to the streets and then to a subway station. If you're in this movie, you're potential cannon fodder and Eve guns down a bystander who makes the mistake of calling her a bitch. Everyone else wisely flees and then it's Jim again Steve in a darkened tunnel. He ends up wounded by gunfire after he breaks his own rule and loses concentration, but Simmons is able to convince Eve to toss her the child by triggering her memory. <laughs>
anyone familiar with killer robot films won't be surprised that Eve is still functional and so comes back for another try. 